And with that, uh, we, we shall begin. So today I will be covering the basics of Memphal to help you start using the product. We will start with a quick introduction to Memphal. I will then dive into the product, navigate around the tool, um, and then share some common workflows and use cases. But first, we're going to start with a poll just to get a clear understanding of everyone who's on the call today. So you should have two questions in front of you. One, how often do you use MemFault today? And two, what department or organization are you from in the company? Great, okay, it looks like for those who've answered so far, we have a good number of people um, answering. We, we have a huge spread across people who are brand new to the product, as well as um, some folks who are using on a weekly, monthly, or maybe have logged in once or twice basis. And we do have representation across customer support, engineering and product, which is great. Um, today is an introduction to MemFault. We're going to be thinking about this at a high level and how all different um, you know, uh, people of different familiar familiarity levels with the product and from different departments can work together to really drive impact for your company and what we all want here, do your, do your job more efficiently and easier. Great. So first, introduction to Memfault. Let me introduce you to Memfault. We are a company led by a small and uh, passionate group of embedded engineers who care deeply about device reliability. And that's that's really what we've been focusing on and what we <clears throat> will continue to focus on as a company. We are here to help you build highly reliable IoT and edge devices at scale and we help businesses accelerate go-to-market, de-risk your product launches, cut product costs, and deliver high-quality, higher-performing connected devices. So that was a bunch of buzzwords. Um, how do we do this? We're here to go into the tactical details today. Memfault collects, processes, and visualize, visualizes diagnostic data from all of your devices in development and in the wild, into one centralized platform. And this platform is also your hub for managing your devices by sending device configurations as well as over the air updates directly to your, to your devices. That means that Memfault is a one-stop shop for understanding the health of your fleet, getting the information you need to debug devices and shipping impactful software updates to improve the reliability of your devices. That's huge. That's everything, all pieces of this process in one place, on one platform, in one universal format that you can learn. And that's how Memfault helps teams across engineering, customer support, and product work faster together. And um, fear not, the, we support all platforms. So uh, if you are a frequent user, maybe you're familiar with how Memfault can work on highly constrained MCU devices, all the way to very much not constrained Android devices. And now as of this year, also Linux devices. So today we're going to be running through a few use cases and I wanted to highlight them before we dig into the demo so you know what to look out for. The first use case we're going to go through will be under the topic of prioritization and focusing on what matters. Too often, um, if we don't have the right data or we don't have visibility across our fleet, we can tend to work on what's easy to find, what's right in front of us, or potentially low-hanging fruit, um, or even what those one or two noisy customers call in about. 
but what is actually going on on your devices and how can you have the biggest impact to improve metrics you care about? And that's where Memfault comes in. We help teams understand what's going on at this 10,000 foot level, as well as on a very granular view as well. So you can identify the worst offending issues that are affecting the most devices, dig into the details, and then resolve the issue and ship a fix all in one place, right? The second use case we're going to be talking about is streamlined collaboration and building a repeatable process everyone can understand. Um, as I mentioned before, Memfault makes it easy to collaborate with others by standardizing device information in an easily accessible format across not just the fleet, but also all of your product lines. You can share the full context with what's happening on a device in a universal format that your team, your cross-functional partners will be used to and they can easily understand it. And the goal here, <laughs> the goal here is to prevent you from ever having to copy paste logs and send them over email or Slack or whatever you're doing again. Um, it can be really complicated to share information on devices with colleagues. And three, the last use case we're going to be talking through is measuring your results, tracking important KPIs. You can monitor fleet health metrics custom to your device to understand one, your device stability or reliability, and two, if all of this work that you're doing is actually making an impact for your customers um, and any other users of your products. Great, so that was my preamble to sort of set the stage. And now we're going to hop into a live demo here. Maybe we can get a dimple thumbs up in the chat that you can see my screen. Great. Okay, so this is the view you will see when you log in. This is the overview dashboard in Memfault. And today I will be going by the name John and I work at the I work on the Memfault organization that is Acme Inc. You can see that over here in the right hand corner. I am first going to start with um, helping you just get familiar with how the dashboard is set up before we walk through some of these use cases. So over here on the left-hand side, we have the platform navigation panel. At the top, you can see which project I'm in here. So at Acme Inc., we have a product called the Smart Sync, and this project is all of the information related to that product line. Our SmartSync is only one of our product lines. It runs um, MCU. We also have a smart fridge that runs on Android. And we recently introduced a hub that runs on Linux. And I think someone's playing around with um, our smart oven, which is in development. I don't know too much about that one. In the dashboard section, you can access the overview dashboard that we see now, um, as well as dashboards and charts that show fleet aggregates of key metrics and also uh, track key issues. In the fleet section, you're able to drill into a specific device or a group of devices. In the software section, this is your control center for understanding what versions are running on your fleet and also where you can ship over the air updates and manage incremental releases as well as stage rollouts. Memfault provides targeted releases to a specific group of devices, which can also be a, a specific device to receive exactly the right uh, software version that you are trying to ship it. And this is very helpful in critical on-call situations to deliver a potential hot fi fix to only the affected devices um, if, it's, if it's pretty critical. 
Under issues, this is where you will see a list of deduplicated issues that all of your devices report in, plus the rich diagnostic data you will need to begin debugging. And finally, the last piece I'll go into today is alerts. Um, alerts allow your team to proactively respond to outliers. You can set alerts at both the fleet level and the device level so that your team knows, knows when they need to log in and start um, responding to things urgently. While we are on the overview page, I wanted to just note a few features that you may see while you're going around the product. First of all, we have this circle with a question mark in it. That is our symbol for our tooltip. You'll see that it is available across many of our different charts, and oftentimes it links directly to our documentation page as well. And this is really helpful for when you are you know, confused or trying to figure out where you need to be, you can always get a little bit extra help and then deep dive into maybe the specifics of how we built that feature as well. This icon here, you can toggle to turn on or off our normalization feature. Our normalization feature does exactly that. It normalizes our charts for the number of devices that we see on the MemFault platform. This is very um, this is very helpful for when you're rolling out to the fleet and you have you know an increase of devices over time, you're obviously going to be seeing an increase of issues over the time. And so it's very hard to track, um, you know, are my devices becoming more stable? We just see this big increase of issues, right? The normalization figure, uh, the normalization tool helps you understand what's really changing over your fleet um, over time, regardless of the size and number of devices that are rolling out. And then finally, we have this little drill down tag here. When you see the drill down, it means that the chart's interactive. And you can do just that, drill down into your chart. So here we have the software versions chart, and you'll see that we have a donut donut chart that is showing, you know, the spread of percentage um, of your fleet running a specific version. If I was interested in all of the devices running this version, I can simply click on it and it will take me directly to the full list of devices that are running that, and then I can drill into those devices on this page. Great. And with that, I will jump into our use cases today. So first, um, a little recap. The first one is prioritization, focus on what matters. Um, this is a great use case that we predominantly see engineering teams using and planning um, at the beginning of their weeks, maybe you have a weekly meeting where you sit down and review where you should be focusing your time. Also, this is where product and engineering can really collaborate as well um, when you're trying to make impact on key metrics or key areas to improve the user experience. So first, I'll head over to this issues tab here. We're going to start with our issues going top down. Um, and just a reminder, what I said before, like this, this is what I mean when you I say you can have a understanding of what's going on at the fleet at a 10,000 foot view and also what's happening at a granular view. On this page here, <clears throat> this is our issue, uh, issue list page. Um, you see one way in which Memphal is doing the hard work for you. All of the error reports your devices send are deduplicated into an issue. So when you investigate an issue, you are able to see how many times this problem occurred and across how many devices. And this empowers your team to make informed decisions on how you should be prioritizing your time to have the greatest impact. There's also a feature here where you can really search for whatever issues you care about. Maybe you've noticed, oops, sorry, um, a, that's our demo instance. Um, maybe, 
Maybe you notice that there are multiple hard faults that are popping up across your fleet and you want to see a full list of them and understand which are the worst offenders. Um, you know, that's something you can do here. And you can also segment it by cohorts that may be, you know, just your production fleet. For today, um, we have a small number of devices at Acme Inc. And they're all, uh, they're, they're mainly dev devices. And I'm just curious overall, how many, um, which issues are impacting the most devices overall? So I'm going to sort this by impact device count high to low. And you can see we, we don't have that many devices, but this is our highest offending issue here. And so I will click into this. This is an issue page. It's filled with all of the diagnostic data you need to debug. And the best part is that this is all automatically collected from the remote devices in the field. So you don't need to have your device on your desk. You don't need to send one out, someone out to go inspect it in the field. Um, you have all the information as soon as that device reports in, rich information for you to begin your debugging in you know, far less time. Um, and it allows your engineers to get ahead of the problem. So again, this is an MCU device. So we have a full stack trace here, along with the exceptions, registers and locals, globals and statics. Our heap, uh, our heap analyzer is not integrated on our demo, uh, demo instance. We also have ISR analysis, MPU, and a memory viewer here as well. You can toggle to logs to get a full understanding of the logs that were reported specifically around the time of the, um, of the issue happening. And all of this information you can also download um, if you need as well. And <clears throat> the information, as I said, the information presented here maps what would be helpful to have on MCU. We vary this across projects that are supporting Android devices or Linux devices. The point is, is that we present what's important for each platform. Um, here at Acme Inc., we have these incredible engineers uh, who, bad joke, fix things very, very quickly. So now that our engineers have all of the information they need to fix this, um, let's fast forward in time and they have a fix. They have a new revision. Um, we're excited to ship software version 1.2. And you can do that directly in the product. So under software, we can go to OTA releases. We can create a new release, which is basically, you know, um, titling it, adding notes, et cetera. Um, we can say this is a must pass through release, which is, you know, every single device must pass through this release before updating to any um, further software versions. Um, and then once we click into the version, this is where we can just simply add that OTA payload to the release here. Now we have to decide which devices we want to ship this, um, this release to. So we go to our fleet section where we manage our devices, look at our cohorts, and our cohorts is a group of devices that we want to ship releases to. Cohorts is the backbone to our OTA service. And so any devices you wish to receive this release, you can bundle into a cohort and um, ship the release. So you can simply, <clears throat> this is our internal, cohort right here. Currently, they're targeting release 0.9.0. And I can get them to our latest version here. Click Go. And now I have the option for a normal rollout or a stage rollout, which I have control over here as well. And then you activate. And once you activate, any device that pings the memfault server will know to download this payload to the release that you've chosen.
great. So that was our first use case. And I was in our MCU smart sync side of the business. I want to show what it looks like and feels on some of our other projects. So I'm going to head over to our Android project, which is our smart fridge. And here we are going to start our second use case. And this is streamline collaboration and building a repeatable process everyone can understand. So immediately you'll see I've gone into Android and it has the same look and feel as the MCU side of the house here. The main difference that you'll see is that the, the issues are going to look like Android issues now. So what we're going to focus on today is a use case where we often see a lot of collaboration between customer support and on-call engineering. <clears throat> so as I said before, often pieces get lost in translation between um, between teams, between uh, cross-functional teams, oftentimes customer support knows there's a problem and then it, it's difficult for engineering to understand where to start their investigation and dive in. So we're going to, again, go, go on to a little bit of story time here, but imagine a customer calls in about an issue on a device um, they've gone through the basic troubleshooting and it does in fact look like something we want to escalate. They've, you know, pushed the on and off button, you know, they've gone to the documentation, they've figured out, nope, we can't solve this. This needs to be escalated to engineering. You may have multiple tiers of customer support or customer service. Um, but it's like that, that technical, technical, um, escalation piece that we're going to focus on here. So the customer support rep will log in, go to the fleet, which is where we know our information by the device view. And we can go to the devices page. The devices page is a list of all of the devices in your fleet on this project. Again, you have a pretty robust search um, capabilities on this list. There's there's more ways that you can really dig into the devices you care about. But today we only care about one device because a customer called in about a specific device. So using, pardon me, the um, the serial number. Let's go with this memfall. Actually, let's do this. Um, let's say this is the serial number here. Um, automatically you have the information for this one device. When I click into the device, we now see all of the information related to that device. And here again, it has a similar layout to what you would see in the MCU side of the house and the Linux side of the house, but it's tailored for those Android uh, uh, products and devices and also the relevant Android information that you're getting. If you want to, this is a great place to add notes about the device. Um, <clears throat> oftentimes you might have another ticketing system where you have these notes, um, but if you want to store those notes in Memfault, we do have that here. You also have the ability to set a nickname. Um, Common use cases may be that you have a device in your CEO's house and it's breaking and it's high urgency. You might want to flag it's your CEO's device. Um, so this is the device page. Oftentimes when a customer calls in, they say, hey, my device was acting really funny yesterday afternoon. And I tried everything, but I don't know what to do. And yesterday afternoon is a hard thing to wrap your head around, but it, it's easy in our timeline view. Our timeline view puts all of the information that's happening on the device that we're collecting in one place. So you have the full context of what's happening on the device as you're going through and debugging it especially like more uh, with more complicated devices with Android, 
you really need to understand not just the specific issue, but everything that might be affecting the device in that moment. So let's head on over to yesterday afternoon and see what was happening. So here we see the device um, timeline for yesterday. And they said they were having some issues yesterday afternoon. And I can immediately see there is sort of a, a big buzz of issues here. Um, these little dots are, are typically what you're looking for. It looks like maybe the device was also buggy in the morning, um, but perhaps our customer did not realize that. One thing I wanted to call out is we were looking at before our issues that were deduplicating those error reports. Memfault calls a unique instance of one of these error reports a trace. So here we can dig in to all of the traces or unique, you know, unique issues that were happening um, on the device during the day and see exactly what type of error it was before uh, it was as well. So let's say they said it was happening around, I don't know, this this time, which is roughly 109. I can just click here on the timeline and automatically I get a highlighted point in time with all of the context leading up to the crash and what happened afterwards. And this URL now is unique. So if you're working with someone, you don't have to copy paste information. You can just copy paste a point in time. You can copy all, all of our links across Memfault are deep links. And so um, <clears throat> as you click into things, as you inspect things, if you want someone on your team to know exactly where you are, you just have to simply share a link. Um, you know, common use cases across our customers is copy pasting this directly into the JIRA ticket or any other platform you use. So now imagine I am the on-call engineer and I get this link from customer support saying, hey, it's this device. We think there was a problem at this time. Can you take a look? Um, I just copy paste uh, this URL into my web browser, and I will exactly show up with this highlighted um, visualization here. I can see, as we've said before, like all of the related log files leading up to the instance. And the nice thing here as well is that um, we can click in directly to the log files and see all of the information we need. Um, we can also tab through time to sort of get this full picture and then filter across um, information we care about. So we get the log files, we get context around maybe what other problems were happening. Here, it seems maybe unrelated, but this is our smart fridge. We've added a few custom events we care about for this product. So we care about when the door opens and when the door closes closes and we've added a few additional pieces of information um, that we that we want to capture along with those events. And then here we have our um, metrics that we're collecting. And the ones you see here are all out of the box on Android. Actually, our demo instance does not represent all of the out of the box metrics available on our more, most recent SDK on Android. You see that there are um, battery metrics that we can track over time. CPU, as well as Wi-Fi down here. And we can look at changes across time. So now going back to the use case, this is streamlined processes and easy to use communication um, in a universal format, giving the full context of the device to whoever is going to inspect or you know, relaying that baton across teams and understanding what you need to be looking for. We're gonna head on back over to our friend, the Smart Sync for our final use case, um, measuring results. <clears throat> so here we wanna be tracking important KPIs. We've talked about <clears throat> sort of digging in from this macro to micro on the issue page, right? Like how many issues are affecting our fleet, sorry, which issues are affecting our fleet the most 
And can we get into the details we need to resolve it and ship a fix? We've talked about going from the device view, um, you know, picking out a specific serial number and digging into the details on a device. And now we're going to zoom out a little bit and look at how we can start thinking about our fleet more holistically um, and see changes over time. I will be going over to the metrics dashboard to start. So you can monitor fleet health metrics custom to your device to understand one, device reliability or stability, and two, if your work is actually making an impact for your customers. Oftentimes we flag bugs that we know that are happening. We think we ship a fix and then we hope that that was successful for all of the customers that may have been having that bug and that's sort of where it goes. Um, and that's also very issue-based. Oftentimes, especially on the product team and the engineering teams, we may be working towards KPIs that are not specifically tied to one issue. It may be something like we want to improve, we care about our battery, battery health, and we want to improve that experience for our customers. <clears throat> and our smart sync here at uh, Acme Inc. actually is battery powered. So on this screen, I forget if I already said this or not, but you can um, you can collect any metric reported from your device and visualize it here. You can also track issue occurrences over time. So we have two different types of metric charts. Um, I'm going to be focusing on a metric chart rather than an issue chart, which is the one that measure, measures issue occurrences. Let's look at the one that's already been created. So this is average battery drop per hour. And just to look under the hood a little bit, this was created by this metric that is gathered and reported by our devices, battery percent delta. And we um, are looking at the mean of those metrics reported in by the device devices in your fleet on a daily basis. And here at Acme Inc., we know that we've been experiencing some pretty rapid battery drain on our sink in dev and since we launched it. And so we've been monitoring it closely in our production devices, um, as well as our internal devices. And here I just want to highlight this ability to um, compare across cohorts and um, software versions as well. So we had a few internal devices that we thought uh, we think are maybe getting better than the ones that we've shipped out into production, but we don't know. Um, and you can see it's, there's no, we haven't done an excellent job. It looks like potentially the internal devices are doing, performing a little bit better than the production devices, but it's something we still need to work on. So this is what I would, this is how I take action to solve um, a battery drop issue that you're you're experiencing once you understand that it's a problem in your fleet. One, I would set up alerts, and two, I would start digging into the devices that are the worst offenders. So let's jump over to the alerts section here. Alerts can be made at both the device level and the fleet level. And here you can see we already have a pre-populated alert that is looking at devices that have extremely rapid battery discharge. Um, if we pop into this, again, looking under the hood of how we set up alerts, we have our title, our description, and here this is, you know, this is our P0, so everyone's getting blasted every time this happens, but you can also choose different targets that you want to send this notification to, such as a distribution list. You can also create a, um, a group of users within in Memfault if you don't have a distribution use uh, dis distribution list at your disposal already. Um, and we can also plug into anything that accepts emails as targets or webhooks. So here we see a um, pager duty set up as well as a Slack channel. Um, so it's very um, flexible. 
we see that this alert is on. So people are getting blasted every time this happens with emails. And the condition that we've set is if this metric goes over 50 on any of our devices, we want to be alerted. Um, and then you can also set the scope. So what we care about is those devices that have memfault in their serial. Um, there are a variety of other ways that you can scope this for you as well to really fine tune so that you're getting the signal for the noise and not just the noise because it's not going to help anyone. So this is our alert for those devices that are seeing some significant problems. You can see here 22 devices were impacted in the last three days. It's a pretty bad problem we have here at Acne. If I click into this alert, I will actually get a full list of devices that, um, that have all reported this problem. And I can just automatically like click into the device here and go back to that device level view, um, start looking specifically at this time, what was going on in the device and try to understand what, what may be the underlying issue that these devices have in common. Again, our engineers are really fast. Um, we found, we found, we think we found an, a fix and we've shipped the fix. Um, I can go back here to my metrics chart and I don't have a pretty example for you today, but again, let's say we have a new software version. Um, maybe it's this one. Um, maybe the fix we shipped is going, is targeting a specific cohort. I can come back here and actually see as we maybe do a staged rollout over time, the fix that we shipped, was it impactful? Are we seeing improvements? Um, you know, do we need to continue our investigation? I think a great way of doing this as well is setting up another alert that is specifically scoped for that new cohort where you think you solved all your problems, but maybe you didn't. Um, and so on that happy note, um, I, that was our last use case and, um, I, the last use case I'm going to share with you today. And this, as I said, was a high level introduction to inspire you to dive into the tool or use it in new ways that you have yet to try. Um, we covered basic navigation of the tool. We introduced a few concepts that will help you navigate around the tool. Um, that was the tool tip the normalization toggle, as well as the um, device uh, ah, device deep dive. I forgot what we call it. It's 8, 8, 8, 842 over here. I haven't had all of my coffee yet. Um, and so we, we walked through those three use cases. Again, prioritization, working on what's important. That's a good one for product and engineering, or maybe... Um, you know, customer support and engineering or engineering by themselves. It's a good way to uh, make sure that you're driving efficiency. And the second was collaboration, which was understanding the deep links that we have in MemFault and how you can just draw someone into the platform rather than trying to send them the information. And in the platform, they'll have all the context they need to understand what you're working on, what you're looking at specifically, and also all of the context that goes along with it. And the third was measuring impact. And that was around um, monitoring uh, key, KP, uh, key KPIs is redundant, but monitoring your KPIs as well as, um, as, as setting up alerts to proactively dive in. So this was MemFault 101.